we see the overflow, God. Glory and honor and praise to you, King. King Jesus, we thank you for the overflow. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We thank you for the overflow. We thank you for miracles in this place, God. Miracles, Father God, in this place this morning. Miracles across this region this morning, God. Because of you, God. King of the Lord. All because of you. All because of you. Because that's who you are. You're the God of miracles. Thank you. 
bow to that name. Everything. Everything has to bow to that name. What a powerful name it is. Don't you know? What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Whatever your situation, all you need to say is Jesus. Demons have to bow. Jesus. 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 Oh. Somebody can say, I don't know what to say. You just need to say Jesus. Jesus. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Oh, you 
it or not, he is. It's good to worship and praise, but whether we do or not, he is. You can't change where he is and his standing. Doesn't matter if people believe or not. I want to talk to you today. And it's, I, I, I want to somehow, some way, address some of the things that are going on, but do it in a way that we look at it from a biblical perspective. And that is so important. It's especially important for us. And it should really be an easy fix in the church. Everything is going on. I mean, all the politis, politis, whatever however you say it, when they're politicizing everything, all of the division and chaos and confusion and strife and anger, all of that should be an easy fix in the church. Yes. We're simply supposed to love each other. Yes. That's our position. And anything outside of that position is just out of the will of God. That's right. So I don't know why we're confused or we act like this is a complicated matter because it is not. And it doesn't matter if they call you a racist. It doesn't matter if they call you a criminal. It makes no difference what anybody says about any of you. Bless those that curse you. That's what the Bible teaches. Well, I don't want to. It's because you're sick. You're spiritually sick. If you don't desire to walk in the love of God, it's the most important thing that any of us do. Regardless of anything. And, and I'm a, I'm a one-race person. I don't, I don't believe in different races. I just don't. I believe we're the human race. That's the way I look at things. If, you know, I may be wrong. I'm not saying I'm not wrong. But I just look at us as one people of one blood. That's the way I look at it. Either we descended from Adam or we didn't. I, you know, I don't know what to say. That's what the Bible says. And so I understand sometimes these things make us uncomfortable. But maybe we need to be uncomfortable. Maybe we need to be so uncomfortable that we're willing to love each other in spite of our uncomfort. And be patient with each other, kind with each other. And... You know, it would be good if we try to figure out who it is that's trying to divide us. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a lot of people, and it's documented, and it's not, it's not like it's something that it's my opinion. There's a lot of people in the ruling class in this nation, it's sad to say we do have a ruling class in this nation. It's never intended to be that way. That believe I'm the problem. The, the fundamental Christians, they're, they're the problem. And this is going to escalate as we continue on toward the new world order. And I don't know if you realize that, but it's coming. There is going to be a man that's going to be the Antichrist He's going to have the solution to everything. And part of the solution is going to be the execution of everyone that calls themselves a Christian. <laughs> that day is coming. If you can't see it, you're not as woke as you think you are. They just, they just run us through a little trial run to see how easily the human population could be controlled. And it really wasn't that difficult. No, 
2,000 years ago, John said that there were already antichrists throughout the world. We've seen this spirit try to rise up again and again. And this spirit was on, on Hitler. He, he wanted world dominance. That was his, his goal. And if, if it had not been for the will of God, it was not God's will for Adolf Hitler to have world dominance. He would have had it because if you know anything about history, and I don't know how many of you are really students of history, but if you know anything about history, Hitler had an army that was capable of destroying the entire planet. We were outgunned and outmanned in every way the Allies were. We tried to stay out of the war as America, and they just wouldn't let us. And then, I mean, God or whatever put us in it. But we shouldn't have won the war. There was divine intervention that caused the Allies to win the Second World War. And so this spirit has always tried to rise up in the world. There's one man that's going to rule everything. And is, are y'all Christians? Do you read your Bibles? Do you just don't believe them? I mean, either you believe this book or you do not. That's right. And I am a person that believes this book. Amen. It's coming. Yes, it is. Whether it happens in our lifetime or not, I cannot tell you. That's not my place. The early apostles thought it was coming in their lifetime. We can see this thing trying to rise up right now. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. And here's what's the danger. If you walk outside of the will of God because of what you see rising up, you can end up in a place that you are not spiritually fruitful. And you can even end up in a place where you wither up and die spiritually. I was working this week in the garden. It's been such a weird year if you're, if you're in agriculture in any way. The spring was just unbelievably cold. I mean, I, I can't remember what day it was. It was like May the 9th. I, I, I thought it was going to freeze at my place on May the 9th. Yeah. The last freeze is typically around the 15th of April. And so I've got all kinds of plants out. And I just, I, I just told the Lord, I said, I'm finished. I've worked so hard. I've planted, replanted so many things because the weather's been so horrible. I said, if you don't say that I ain't messing with it anymore, I'm done with this. And it didn't freeze. We got really cold, killed a bunch more stuff, but a lot of stuff lived. And so I continued on. And it goes from wet and cold to in just a couple of weeks. I mean, there were places on my place you couldn't drive a tractor. You would have sunk to the axle two weeks, three weeks ago. And now it is just bone dry. And I was working and I, this thought just came to me. It's amazing how quickly things can dry out. It is amazing how quickly we can dry out. You can be totally on fire for Jesus. I mean, you don't care what any antichrist spirit or, or any uh, media mob or, or any outside influence is trying to make you think one way or another to get you to look at one group of people one way or another. You refuse to allow any of that into your spirit. I mean, you're just in love with Jesus and you're in love with people and you're not offended and you're on fire for God and you're doing what God wants you to do and then you, you somehow get distracted. You start spending a little bit too much time allowing these other influences to, to infiltrate your eyes and your ears and your mind and you start listening to all the lies and before you know it, you're believing all the lies and then the next thing you know it, you're hating this group of people and you're hating 
astonishing how quickly we can dry up. And it doesn't even have to be that radical. You can just get busy. I mean, you, 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 you're pursuing God. You wake up every morning. I mean, it's the first thing you do. You go in there, you make your pot of coffee. You open your Bible. You start talking to God, and God starts talking to you. And you're, you're loving God, and you're loving people, and you're in, you're in pursuit of Jesus. But then there's all of these outside influences requiring your time. And you wake up early, you just don't have time for God. You don't have time for the Word. I'll get it tomorrow, Lord. Forgive me for not praying today, God. And today turns into tomorrow, and the day after that, and the day after that, and the week after that, and the month after that. And before you know it, you're, you're not reading your Bible. You're not praying. You're not in church. And you wonder, where did you go, God? Where are you at? Well, he's right where you left him. He hasn't moved. He hasn't changed. He's still sitting at your desk waiting on you to come back. And see, I don't want, I, I talked about this a little bit at the men's meeting yesterday. I don't want this to be legalistic or dogmatic. I don't want you to feel like I'm shaming you into pursuing God. I want you to walk out here today knowing that you have the privilege yeah. of being in pursuit of God. That he is worth pursuing. That he is worthy of our effort. That he is worth every ounce of energy required, no matter what. Yeah. It's, just, it's exciting to pursue God. You, you wake up in the morning, not, not with the idea that I've got to get in the Bible before I get to my day. Right. You go, i got to get into my day, so I've got to get into my Bible. If you're dry, if you're if you're in here today and you're dry, I can I can promise you the reason you're dry is because you haven't been in the Word. Yeah, that's right. You might be reading it. You could be listening to it via CD or technology every day and still not be into it. There's a man and a woman, husband and wife, having a conversation. Well, she thought they were. <laughs> and she's been talking for about 15 minutes. And she looked at her husband and said, You're not listening to me at all, are you? He said, Well, that's a really strange way to start a conversation. <laughs> Who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, 
And let me tell you, most of the information out there today is being spewed by the wicked. They have no biblical worldview. They don't believe that there's an antichrist coming. They don't believe that there's a new world order. I mean, even if they do believe it, they don't understand the, the, the biblical truth of it. They just think in their mind it's the best way to run things. They don't understand the spirit that they're opening the world up to. That it's not just going to be about making things better. It's going to be about world dominance. And even if they know that, they don't really know that. Because if you give it into the spirit of this age, if you give it into the spirit of this world, you are deceived. You have believed a lie. It's the most dangerous thing that anybody ever did was believe a lie. When Nazi Germany, when it was coming into to beginning, the Nazis, were, as they were beginning to take control of the nation, that, that was one of their one of their trademarks. If you tell the same lie often enough, the people will believe it. Lie after lie after lie after lie, and before you know it, there's a, there's a young man, and I love this kid. He's such a good young man, but he is so caught up in the deception. I mean, if you start hating people because they don't see things like you see things, I'm not saying who's right here. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying who's right or what side of the fence you need to be on. We're all different. But if you start hating me because I look at things differently than you do, I'm not the one with the problem. Especially if you call yourself a Christian. A Christian is supposed to love their enemies. So they should look at me and say, I know you're a racist, Brother Barry, but I love you anyway. And I'm not a racist, but that's what people say. For whatever reason, I'm not sure. Actually, I do know. It's because I don't agree with them. And if you disagree with a certain philosophy that's alive and well in our nation today, the first thing they do, and I know this is because my own family is called me a racist. And I just shake my head and go, I love everybody. I don't, I'm not sure what is your definition of a racist. I don't treat anybody different regardless. The skin color has nothing to do with anything to me. I'm going to treat everybody the same. I don't care if you got money. If you don't, black, red, orange, white, green, don't make no difference to me. If you're green, I'm going to be praying that you don't die. Because there's something wrong if you're green. If 70 million rednecks that own guns and 12 trillion rounds of ammunition were the problem, you would know it. You have no idea the restraint that is taking place right now. I'm not sure that some people don't want a civil war. But if it happens, no one's going to like it. That's right. I've heard people calling for it. You'll be the one that hates us the most. Blessed are the peacemakers. Ain't nothing blessed about causing war. Right. 
What part of loving each other don't we understand? Who does, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Anything divisive, anything chaotic, anything confusing, anything that is, the, the thief goes about to steal, kill, and destroy. That's how simple it is. Anything that is stealing, killing, and destroying. If you're walking in that counsel, you're not walking in the place of blessedness. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the word of God. Blessed is the man whose delight is the word of God. I mean, is the word of God your ice cream? Is the word of God your T-bone? Is the word of God your shopping spree? Is the word of God what sustains you? Is the word of God what motivates you? Is the word of God what is coming out of your mouth? Is the word of God what is going on around and around in your head? Is it the word of God that's bouncing around in you? If it is, you're blessed. Yeah. And on his word, he meditates day and night. When the enemy comes, we just think about the word. Man, this has just been in my spirit for a couple of days now. There's somebody in here, somebody that's watching via technology. And I'm so glad that you watched via technology, but if you would rather sleep in, get up late, and watch this on technology instead of being here, and you're capable of being here, then you are dry and you are thirsty. Whether you know it or not, I'm telling you, healthy followers of Christ they want to be in here even if they don't want to be in here. And I, I know that makes sense to somebody. That it's, it's a struggle to be here, but you're just going to be here anyway. Because you know there's a place that I can find something that will quench my thirst. There is something and some place that I can go to get what I need when I feel like I'm drying up and I'm about to blow away. If it's, if 
It's the Gaithers. I don't care who you listen to. God don't care who you listen to. There is so much anointed music out there. You get the music on. You sit down. If you don't need music to worship, then don't turn nothing on. But you just lift your hands and you lift your heart and you begin to worship Jesus. And you, you sit up. Shut up and watch this. And you just keep worshiping.
I want you to know that this will change you. It will cause you to be fruitful when nothing else will work. I promise you, no matter who it is that you listen to, to get your information, if you get it off the internet, if you watch one of the news networks, they're not offering water. It's just not water. And I hate to be uninformed. I don't know if Denzel Washington really said it or not, but I love the guy. And they attributed to this quote, but who even knows anything that you read? Whether it's true or not. The only thing that I have any confidence in that it's true is right here. But supposedly Denzel Washington said, if I watch the news, I'm misinformed. But if I don't watch the news, I'm uninformed. I don't know which way to go. I don't know how much to watch and how much to listen to. And I sure don't know how much to believe. But when they're trying to pit me against other human beings, I ain't buying it. No, that's right. Because this book tells me that's not how I'm supposed to live. Amen. We have lost so much ground. Dr. King brought us to not a bad place. His dream was that one day his children could be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. We have lost that. Now, all that matters is the color of skin. That's insanity. I couldn't care less. And I couldn't care less about the content of your character. It's not my place. I can't change your heart. See, we're trying to make evil men do good things. It ain't happening. The only way a man will ever change is if the God of this Bible touches their hearts. That's the only hope there is. And you ain't going to get it on CNN. And you ain't going to get it on Fox News. You ain't going to get it on Politico or HuffPost or the New York Times or the Washington Post. You ain't going to find any of it there. All you're going to find is more of the chaos and more of the confusion. And I'm telling you, I can open this book and I can see where Jesus told me to love my neighbor as I love myself. And I can see where Jesus told me to judge not lest I be judged. And I got news for you. If you, and I've I've, I've had so many people say this. I mean, they act like you can't speak a word of correction about anything or you're judging. And they're like, only God judges me. And I'm like, sister, you don't even know what you're saying. You're comfortable with a God that knows everything that is all powerful, that sees everything, that is perfectly just, you're fine with him judging you. I am not. I'm like, God, be merciful to me. If you're comfortable with God judging you, You have no idea who you're dealing with. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Help me, Jesus. Help me. In Hebrews 10, the Bible teaches us that the former way would never make us perfect. 
So God sent his son through that sacrifice. Those that are being made holy are perfect in Christ. You see, that's the whole deal right there. And if you're watching this or you're in this room and you don't know Jesus, whether you realize it or not, you're the most thirsty of all. You are dying of thirst. You're in a desert. You're in a wasteland. I don't know if you know it or not. But my dear brother, my dear sister, you're at the brink. But 2,000 years ago, God saw you in that desert. He saw you in that wasteland. He saw you dying of thirst. And he said, I have an answer. It is my son. I will send him. He will lay his life down. And all who are thirsty can come to him and drink freely. Of the water of life. Whether you know it or not. If you don't believe anything else I say. I beg you. I implore you. I plead with you to believe this. Jesus Christ came to save sinners. The apostles Paul said. Of whom I am chief. If Paul was the chiefest of sinners. Then who am I? But because of Jesus, me in my lowly and broken estate has become a son of God. Amen. That's who I am because of what Jesus did. Amen. And he will do the same for you. That's right. And so as we conclude this morning, if you're thirsty, I want you to come. As we stand to our feet, I just, I just feel the impressed of the Lord that if you're thirsty, if you will just come, ain't nobody going to lay hands on you, that the Holy Spirit will touch you. If you're thirsty, come. If you don't know Jesus, right there where you're at, say, Lord, I'm thirsty. I'm coming to you. I'm coming for the drink that I need. If you're thirsty, come. It doesn't matter if you're saved or if you're not. If you've been in a dry place, come. If, if you don't wake up in the morning excited about what you're about to see in this book, you're thirsty, come. All who are thirsty, come. And freely drink. I believe God is going to give people a drink this morning. As the music begins to play, come. Just come. Just come. Just come and drink. Drink from the river of life. Drink. Just forget about everything else. Say, well, this person's mad at me or that person's mad at me. Or I'm mad at this person. Or I'm not, just come and drink. Just come and drink.